Uh, that actually concludes questions for oral answer. Order. I have received a letter from Carmel Cipollone seeking to debate Understanding Order 389, the State of Care 2015 report on child, youth and family from the Office of the Children's Commissioner. The release of the report is a particular case of recent occurrence. The report deals with child, youth and family, which is the service arm of the Ministry of Social Development. The report raises many very serious concerns about the care of vulnerable children by the state. It recommends significant changes to improve outcomes for children. Having carefully considered this application and read the report, I believe it does require the urgent attention of the House. I therefore call on Carmel Cepoloni or an alternative to move that the House take note of an urgent matter of public importance. And Mr. 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 Speaker, on behalf order, of order, Carmel order, order. Sorry, I have a point of order from the young. No, I think we may be in new territory here. Members normally seek the uh, uh, leave the House for a general for a debate on such matters, uh, put their signature to it because they want to speak to it. Uh, in this case, uh, where someone else is filling in order. for someone who was here earlier in the day, I think it's a little poor. Oh, not, not, no, no, it's, it's not the first time it's happened. It is uh, quite uh, probable that a member can put in for a, an urgent debate. It is considered, the decision is made, and if that member for any reason is not here, it can equally be moved by somebody else. I call Mr. On, Speaker. Um, Jacinda Ardern. Mr Speaker, on behalf of Carmel Cipollone, I so move. Mr Speaker, the report that we have before us today is an absolute indictment and it is only right that this House gives its time and consideration to what can only be considered some of the most important issues that we have a responsibility to address as members of this Parliament. And there is no statement in this report that captures the seriousness of the issues, more so than the statement the Children's Commissioner made that, quote, we don't know if children are better off as a result of state intervention, but the indications are not good. Mr Speaker, to hear from the representative and advocate of children in this country that we cannot even guarantee that a child who is potentially being abused and neglected, who has an intervention from the state, is necessarily better off as a result of that in an intervention. What an absolute indictment on this country that we are in this situation. Mr Speaker, the Commissioner lists a range of areas specifically where we are failing our most vulnerable, and they are our most vulnerable. More than 50% of these children are under the age of 10, and 5,000 of them are in the care of responsibility of the state. The state is their parent. The state has become the only stable thing that the government has determined needs to take over so that they can be assured of safety and security. And yet what is happening to those children after that intervention? We have the case of one child who had up to 60 different placements. What message do you send to a child who has experienced abuse and neglect at the hands of their own family or caregivers to then shuffle them around up to 60 different placements. We've got records of constantly changing caseworkers and a lack of stability and care and support for those children. A lack of support when transitioning, not only between care, but out of care. And let's remember that out of care in this country means at 17 years of age, one of the youngest ages to exit care in the developed world and even then, we're not supporting those young people. And the horrific number of more than 100 children who even once are removed are experiencing further abuse and neglect. And what long-term hope do they have when only 20% of these children are then reaching NCEA level two or higher? All of this paints a damning picture, not only for the state, but for the children themselves who are experiencing this. Now, Mr Speaker, it is true to say that in an area such as this where you have wickedly complex problems, that we have had issues arise before. Labor had to deal with it when we came into office in 1999. And what did we do? Straight away, we recognised the underfunding and under-resourcing. 
We increased the baseline funding of that department by more than 50%. I'll say that again. When Labor last took office, they increased support for SIF's baseline funding by more than 50%. But even then, as the years went on, we recognised we needed to do more, particularly with the workforce. We undertook a baseline review. That piece of work was completed by the Honourable Ruth Dyson. And a result of that piece of work, uh, and before that, we also made sure that we started registering social workers. And now we say it's time that that become mandatory. We improve relationships with the community sector, and our 10-month baseline review resulted in $111 million in operational spending going into SIFs. And why? They didn't have the resources they needed to do the job. And when that happens, you've got to stand up and have the courage to acknowledge it as a government, and that is what we're calling on this government to do. Because as much as that minister stands up and says, we can't just throw money at the problem, well, minister, the last time we looked at whether or not this department was sufficiently resourced was 13 years ago. 13 years ago was the last time a baseline review was done of SIFs, and a lot has changed in between. Reviewing these issues again is not chucking money at an issue. It's good practice to check that your social workers have the support they need to do the uh, work that they do. Because what has changed? We don't have a static picture when it comes to vulnerable children in New Zealand. Let's just look at the numbers. During the year 30th of June 2014, SIFs received 146,657 notifications of a possible abuse or neglect. 146 thousand, that's enormous, that is 17 per cent higher than just five years ago. 80,000 notifications were made back then. That's just a massive increase in a short space of time. Now, the Minister will claim that not all of that is substantiated, that we might have false reporting, that just more people know about the vulnerability of children. In part, some of that will be true, but not all of it. In fact, we know that roughly a third of those notifications are coming from the police who know that those children are witnessing domestic violence and we know the impact that has on those children. We also know from the police that a lot of them are in fact substantiated. In fact, in the recorded number of uh, cases where children have uh, been abused, have gone up to 5,397 offences. Now that figure is 56 per cent higher than in 2009. So in that short space of time, the workload on SIFs, the increase in harm against children, has absolutely been documented. And what's happened to staff? What have we done to make sure that they're able to cope with those dramatic jumps? Well, in the five years, how many more social workers would you expect to be dealing uh, with 66,000 more notifications? How many more staff? Well, in that short pace of time, there have been six, 76 new field workers. 76 new field workers. Crudely, 877 cases per each, uh, per new social worker. That is phenomenal. There is no way anyone in this House could claim uh, that that is sufficient to deal with the extra demand this department is dealing with. Now, Mr Speaker, yes, some issues in SIFs have cut across governments, absolutely no denying it. But there is no denying that right now, in this period of time that this minister and this government has responsibility for, the changes for SIFs have been enormous. And the Children's Commissioner put it like this, the ability of SIFs' current workforce to improve the outcomes experienced by children in the care system is constrained in various ways. Limited resources, high caseload, and the need to invest in training. The minister cannot put her head in the sand that she must support her department as part of answering these issues. Um, I wonder if the minister, in fact, could respond even to the body who represents social workers when they said, and I quote from the PSA, the government must address 
these issues of underfunding and capability. Otherwise, there will be no improvement for those in need. I do not want to hear a contribution from the Minister that says chucking money at this problem is not the answer. No one said chuck money at anything. We said invest in the people that you have charge of. Make sure they're equipped to do the job. It's a hard job and at the moment all of the indications are that the cracks are showing in what they're having to deal with. Now no one knows this better than the Children's Commissioner. He's even had static funding. So much so that he's closed his Auckland office. He can't do an annual visit of all of the residences he's meant to monitor. They've moved to every 18 months. He himself is struggling under the weight of an underinvestment in this sector. He won't say it, so we'll say it on, her, uh, on his behalf. Mr Speaker, the one area that the Children's Commissioner has said that SIFS is doing a good job at focusing on is that first intervention. The first moment when they're told that there's a potential issue with the safety of a child. In fact, this is how he states it. Our analysis is that child, youth and family is very focused on keeping children safe and managing the intake and assessment process at entry to the system. And I say that again, at entry to the system. They've lost sight of what children need while in care and what they need to receive to ensure they thrive once they left, and that concerns me. That beginning is incredibly important. It's the triage phase. It's the point where we make sure a child is not in immediate danger. Interestingly, it's also where the political risk exists. As the Social Service Providers Association stated in their response to the report, quote, SIF staff are extraordinarily challenged by the dual expectations of managing both political risk and the risk of abuse to children. Mr Speaker, very few social workers ever speak out of turn. They are very professional. But I will never forget when I had a SIF social worker who retired and came to see me and said, we're required to keep a political risk register, not a register of harm to children, not a register of risk to family, a political risk register. We all have to take responsibility when a department starts focusing on the politics instead of focusing on children. That is an absolute indictment and it is part of the problem. And it is part of what must change if we're to focus on uh, outcomes for kids. Because what have we lost sight of? The Children Commissioner put it clearly, transition into placement, support for caregivers, focus on residential care. And I want to touch on the residential care. Mr Speaker, the Minister knows she's had problem with residential care. SIFS residents, including youth justice residents run by SIFS. And how do I know that? I have an OIA to prove it. Now, I've never used these stats in the House or in fact anywhere, Mr Speaker, but there is a youth justice facility in Christchurch that the Minister's been briefed on almost continually now for a couple of years. And why? Because based on the OAI I received, between July 2014 and April this year, that facility had more than 600 dangerous incidents. I'll say that again. Between July 2014 and this year, a Christchurch-run SIFS facility had more than 600 recorded serious incidents, including serious assaults, drug use and self-harm. Police have been called to the centre numerous times, and in the past two years, as the Children's Commissioner pointed out as part of the problem, they've had 16 temporary staff and five different residential managers. I have briefings that show that the government knew about the problems at this resident. Indeed, they know about the problems more broadly within SIFs. And what have we had from that government in response to these kinds of issues? Mr Speaker, we had a white paper, we had a green paper, and we've got a children's action plan. The Minister places a lot of weight, for instance, on children's teams. So apparently they're going to help 20,000 kids. And where's that resource going to come from? I'll tell you where. Family start. The Minister is reprioritising resources that are already in the field on early intervention and shifting them for her new action plan. Mr Speaker, that whole exercise had the goodwill of the community sector behind it, but it did not address core issues. What we should be looking at is putting children at the heart of all of the decisions that we make around them. We should be focusing on early intervention, and Mr Speaker, that means ministers and government have to look at deprivation, poverty and inequality in our community. That is the heart 
of many of these issues that we're dealing with. They need to join back together interventions in the home and continuity of care because they've been separated. They need to focus on ensuring their department is resourced properly, trained properly and supported properly. They need to guarantee they will not privatise the bits of the system that they are scared is falling over and causing accountability issues for them. We've all heard rumours about Serco sniffing around youth justice facilities. We need the Minister to rule out that that will not be her answer and her way of getting this issue off her plate. And what we also need to do, Mr Speaker, is ensure that young people who are in care and protection right now, the kids who are in facilities, the kids who are in care, the kids who are in foster care, are used to come up with the answers. They should be part of this discussion. Not only did the Minister's expert advisory panel not even include a social worker, it didn't include a young person who knows care and protection better than anyone, and those are the kids who are in it. Labor will use those voices. Labor will use the voices of social workers. Labor will use the community sector who work in this space, because only collaboratively will we come up with solutions, and that includes Māori and Pacifica as well. Mr Speaker, yes, some of these issues go beyond just the last seven years, but this report absolutely has to be taken on board by this government, responsibility by this government to repair the damage that has been done to children's lives right now. We should expect no less. Yeah.